The physical body limits the mind. If we want to know what a superintelligence might do, then our models of it should reflect this fact. It is a problem I set out to solve in this paper. I show superintelligence is safer than previously theorized. I also show how we might construct it. IXC is a theoretical software superintelligence, or at least it was supposed to be. Instead, it revealed a flaw in the very idea of intelligence software. The behavior of software is determined by the hardware that interprets it. And this undermines every claim we might make regarding the behavior of a theorized software superintelligence interacting with the world through an interpreter. I call this problem computational dualism because it resembles the Cartesian dualism of the 1600s. The philosopher Descartes thought there were two substances, mental and physical. He argued mental affects physical through the pineal gland, through animal spirits. And strangely, we seem to have reinvented this idea when we conceived of AI. Instead of mental and physical substances, though, we have software and hardware. We try to make claims about what a software mind might do, and prominent scientists talk about AI as immortal computations and the human mind as something mortal in comparison. But the truth is, immortal computations don't exist. It is a story we tell ourselves. What we call software is really just the state of hardware, and when that hardware dies, so too does the software. When I load software on a computer, nothing moves into the computer. Instead, I just change the state of the computer's memory. You might think of artificial intelligence as the engineering branch of philosophy of mind. They moved on from Cartesian dualism. Now they talk about inactive, embodied cognition. We, however, remain stuck in the 1600s. If we want to make objective claims regarding the performance of an artificial superintelligence, then we must avoid computational dualism. I propose an alternative, pan-computational inactivism. Rather than starting with a mind and wondering how it interacts with an environment through a body, I start with the environment and formalize the body and the mind as processes within it. Every aspect of the environment is a relation between irreducible states. There are no presupposed abstractions or interpreters. We formalize self-organizing cognitive systems as part of the environment, not some disembodied policy interacting with it through an interpreter. And then I use this formalization to make an objective claim regarding the ability to generalize, to identify causes, to adapt. I establish an upper bound for intelligent behavior, for a superintelligence. This has many implications. Physical embodiment imposes severe limitations. AGI might be safer, but far more limited than theorized. However, this also shows us how we might try to attain this upper limit. It shows us how we can optimize embodiment, that is, the hardware of which this software mind is a state, so that we can build a more versatile artificial intelligence that learns from fewer examples, that can identify cause and effect, and may even be conscious.